Hello, hi, Ray Edwards here, and you know, I published a vlog the day before yesterday about the 10 steps to building a million dollar writing practice. And I have to apologize because I felt like everything that I assumed was part of those first three steps that I posted was obvious, was self-evident. But based on the comments and questions I got, clearly that was not the case. So today, I'm not going to give you three at a time. I'm going to give you all 10 steps. This is just the shorthand, kind of the headline versions of all these 10 steps, but they are the 10 steps. And I believe I've given this a lot of thought. I looked at your questions very carefully. I believe these are the 10 discrete steps that form the foundation of building a successful million dollar writing practice. And maybe a million dollars is not your thing. Maybe it's $100,000 a year. Maybe it's $20,000 a year. I don't know. The number is up to you. It's arbitrary. A million dollars is kind of a, an aspirational number for a lot of people. It's sort of a goal that looks like a finish line. No goal is a finish line, I'll tell you that right now. But it's catchy, right? So you got your attention. You're watching this video, so let's go. Step one, get or be good at writing. See, I thought this would be self-evident. You, you got to be able to write if you want to have a writing business and make a million dollars or whatever your number is. And I'm not going to keep saying that disclaimer. I'm just going to say a million dollars. And you know, I'm not guaranteeing you any money. I'm not guaranteeing you an income from watching my free video. <laughs> so don't write me nasty emails and say, I didn't make a million dollars, Ray, you said I would. No, I didn't. But if you aspire to it, the first thing you got to do is get or be good at writing. Now, if you, if you don't think you're good at writing, you're probably better than you think because the kind of writing that makes the money is not scholarly academic writing. It is conversational, relatable writing. Step number two, this is gonna throw you for a loop. Design the life that you really want. You know, a lot of people say, I want a million dollar business, and they go after it, and they get really busy, and they work really hard, and they find out a few years later, they're divorced, their kids don't even know them, they are sick, they have heart problems, they don't have any friends, they don't have a social life, but they have a million dollars, and they're not happy. So don't be that guy, or that lady. Design the life you really want. Like look ahead five years from now and say to yourself, if I have a million dollar writing business and it's successful in all areas of my life, it helps all the parts of my life work together, what does that look like? What kind of house am I living in? What does my family life look like? How much time am I spending with my kids, with my wife or my husband, my significant other? Um, what do we do for recreation? How much time off do I have to just play and enjoy the life I've built? Those are important questions you have to answer first, because first you put the big rocks in, as the analogy goes. I won't belabor that point. I'll just say you've got to put the important stuff on your calendar first. And if you want to work only 30 hours a week and have extra time for church and social activities and family and friends, you've got to design that intentionally from the beginning. That's the next step. After you know, okay, I'm good enough with the skill, I can build a business. So I have step one, I can write well enough to do this. Step two is, what kind of life do I want? And you reverse engineer everything from there. So if you say, I want to make a million dollars a year, I want to work 20 hours a week, and I want to work 40 weeks out of the year with 12 weeks off, that gives you some parameters about how much you have to be paid per hour of work, for instance. I don't post my working uh, rates as hourly rates. Never, never do that. Just let me say that right now. But you need to know internally for yourself if what you're doing right now is worth the money you're giving up to do it, if that makes sense. In other words, if you get paid $2,500 an hour to make your salary every year, is what you're doing right now worth $2,500 an hour? Or could somebody else do it for $20 an hour? If, could, if they could, then hire them to do it, for crying out loud. Design the life you want first. Okay, step three, get good at writing for the money. In other words, get good at writing the kind of writing that makes the money. Poetry, probably not gonna do it for you. Science fiction, probably not going to do it for you. If you want a million dollar writing business, you're going to have to write the kind of writing that makes money. And that's either content or sales writing. And in my book, it's sales writing. Writing copy that gets people to buy stuff. Why? Because there's a measurable output from that. There's a re measurable return on investment. And there are people who will pay for it. It's the highest paid form of writing in existence that I know of. Unless you're Stephen King. And you're not. <laughs> Unless you are. If you are, hi Steve, I love your work. Thanks for watching. Step four, pick the right niche. And what is the right niche? No, it's not the one you're passionate about, although that would help. No, it's not the one that is most popular right now, although that would help too. Here's the right niche. 
the one that uses direct response copywriters, understands the value of direct response copywriting, and pays top dollar for copywriters. Why would I say all that? Why would I make those the qualifiers? Because otherwise, you're gonna be trying to talk to your local dry cleaner and trying to convince him of why he needs to use direct response advertising. You gotta start from square one, and that is fruitless. It is a frustrating battle fighting against such resistance. Their mindset is all wrong. It's too much work, it's too hard, and it's not gonna work for you. It's, I don't mean to be negative, just acknowledging reality. It's like, if you're running east looking for a sunset, you're never gonna find one, because it doesn't work that way. So instead of fighting the uphill battle or running east looking for that sunset, do the opposite. Go in the direction of the sunset. Go, go west, young man, young woman. Pick a niche that already uses direct response, already uses copywriters, understands their value, and already pays good money for them. And that person could be you. Okay, are we good? You guys okay? Just make it sure. Step five, pick your perfect customer. I don't mean a specific company, although maybe that's gonna work for you, but I mean, what kind of person is the perfect person for you to work with? For me, here's how I describe my perfect customer. My perfect customer is positive, optimistic, entrepreneurial, spiritually minded, honest, fair, cheerful, fun, enjoys hanging out, talking about marketing and business, but also enjoys life, and my perfect customer is not a whiner, not a complainer, not a blamer, shamer, or justifier, not a bully, uh, doesn't speak ill of other people when they're not present, doesn't speak ill of people when they are present. So I don't, I don't wanna work with people who are downers, who are negative, who are conspiracy theorists, who have a gloomy end of the world outlook on life. I don't wanna work with those people. I love them, but I don't have to work with them directly. I know what my perfect customer looks like. They look a lot like me. <laughs> And it's probably the same for you. So the short way of saying this is pick people you would like to work with as your perfect customer. People you like. But know clearly what those qualities are. I describe them for you very quickly because I know them well. And know what qualities turn you off. And whenever you see those turn off qualities show up in people, don't work with them. I know it'll be tempting. You'll find somebody who fits every description except for one. There's one thing about them. They're like maybe super negative about other people. And you say, well, I can overlook that. I can even help them overcome that because they're gonna pay me a lot of money. It's never worth the money to work with a person who's not right for you. Pick your perfect customer and stick to those criteria no matter what. Step number six, manufacture your market identity. What do I mean, manufacture? Do I mean be fake? Do I mean fake it till you make it? No. I mean, look inside yourself. Maybe get other people involved in this and find out what are the qualities that make you unique, make you different, make, make you even quirky. What's your unique advantage, your unique genius in, in the world of business and life? Whatever that is, focus in on that and then magnify it. You know, it's like when you go to a party, you put on the best possible party you. You're not faking it, you're just picking the parts of you that are fun to be with and magnifying them, and you're taking the parts of you that are not so fun to be with, and you're minimizing them. This is what you're doing when you create your market identity. You wanna be known as a certain kind of person, having certain qualities, and you wanna emphasize certain parts of your story so that people can have a memorable hook to hang the concept of you on. For instance, I have a friend whose name is Dan, and he, for a long time, owned two Doberman Pinscher dogs, the big dogs like run Magnum PI, and he became known as Doberman Dan. I know who that guy is. I know his logo, I know his newsletter icon. He's got a certain personality, he's an ex-cop. I know lots of things about him that I remember, and I hang all those on the hook of Doberman Dan. So what's your identity in the marketplace? What is gonna make you unique? What makes you a character? People often wanna skip over this. They wanna downplay it. They don't wanna be weird. Weird is memorable. And you know what? The only people who are not weird are people you don't know very well yet. <laughs> Just think about that for one time. So manufacture your market identity and then cultivate it and feed it like it's a fire. Keep putting wood on that fire so that people understand, oh yeah, that's Doberman Dan. That's the guy. Get it? Got it? Good. Step seven, get a track record. Get some results for people. This is something that came up in the last video. Somebody said, well, how about results? That'd be a good step to have. Yeah, that's true. How do you get a track record? You take a few swings, you have some misses, and you have some hits. You keep doing more of what got you the hits and less of what got you the misses. It's just that easy. If you're any good at all and you pick the right clients, you pick the right opportunities to write for, Jay Abraham calls it picking a setup, picking something you know you're going to be successful with. So when you get a few of those, then you have a track record, you have results that you can show people. 
And if you're very careful and you only work with people who you know you can get results for, you won't fail them. See? You don't take a check from somebody if you know you cannot help them. You just don't do it. Step number eight, you know what to charge for your services. This is tricky for a lot of people, but I have a very simple formula for figuring this out. You figure out the life you want to lead, which we did in step two, how many hours you want to work per week, how many weeks you want to work per year. That gives you a finite number of hours you're going to work in a given year. You take your annual income and divide it by that number of hours, and now you know your hourly rate. Now you can look at any project and say, okay, it's going to take 10 hours to do that project. My hourly rate is $2,500. Therefore, I must be paid $25,000 for that job. Now you might say, well, I don't know if I'm worth $25,000. Then you need to get more valuable. That's just the bottom line. How do you do that? <laughs> well, you get better. Um, the, each of these steps is like a whole complete module of a year-long course of study that I engage in with my mentoring students. So I can't go into all the detail here, but you can, you can trace down the books, you can do the research, you can do the stuff online, you can look it up, you can watch YouTube videos. The point is, you're smart. You can take these 10 principles I'm telling you about and you can research them and you can fill in the blanks or you can get help. We have a mentoring program. You might be interested in that. If we have any openings, I don't know, contact my office. You gotta know what to charge. You gotta be valuable enough to be able to charge it or you gotta change your income goals. One of those three. Step number nine, make your first $100,000 as a writer. This is a milestone for a lot of people. Six figures, $100,000. How do you do it? Well, about $8,500 a month. That'll do it for you. So you do it by hard work. You do it by getting good clients. You do it by doing great work for those clients. You do it by getting results for those clients and getting referrals. It's a process. And once you hit $100,000 one time, it's easy to hit it the next time. It's easier. The first $100,000 is the hardest. The next hurdle that's hard to overcome, at least for me, was the $500,000 mark. And once you get past there, that million dollars seems a long way off. So that's step 10, make a million dollars as a writer. And to do that, you gotta play at a different level of the game. You can make $100,000 as a freelance writer. You can. It's very hard to make a million dollars as a freelancer. You might still do freelance work, but you gotta have another business structure around you in order to make that work. Either you must have an agency, where you have apprentices writing for you and so forth, or you have products that you sell, training products, informational products, or you have a business that you use your copywriting to fuel the marketing for that business. It may not be related to copywriting. It may be something else. Like I own a coffee shop with my son. That's another business that we've invested in. So the point is freelancing will get you to $100,000 a year. To get to a million dollars a year, you've got to use your writing to parlay that into other things. And that is a lot more than we can go into in this video. But those are the 10 steps. The 10 steps to becoming a million dollar writer. And the best part is, it works even if nobody knows who you are. You don't have to be Stephen King or J.K. Rowling. Nobody has to know who you are. And just imagine making a million dollars a year as a writer, having lots of people read your writing, having a big impact on the world, and not being recognized on the street. It's not too bad. It's not a bad lifestyle. Do you have questions, comments, feedback? Put it in the comment section below. I'll read them, I'll respond to them, I'll do my best to help you if I can. I'm doing it here for free. I do have a program available that is something you pay for. You don't have to get that. You can use these steps all on their own and become successful on your own. Or you can get some help. If you need some help from me or you'd like some help from me, I'd be honored to help you if we have room. We only have seats for 12 people. To find out if we have any seats open right now, go to the link in the information box below. Click on where it says show more. There'll be a link there, click on that. And if it's open, there'll be an opportunity to sign up. If it's not, there'll be a wait list. So either way, if you're interested, then great. If you're not, you just want to take the free information and run with it, great. I'm, I'm delighted. I'm here to help you. So put your questions below, and I will see you tomorrow in the next video. All right. Go get them.